Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online for Mac. Well, we're finished with El Capitan, so this week I thought I'd take a look at the latest version of iMovie that was released just a few weeks ago. The new version of iMovie supports the editing and exporting of 4K video, as well as 1080p at 60 frames per second, both formats now available on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, as well as many other consumer or prosumer cameras. Apple does seem to be getting into 4K in a big way, as they've also just released the new 21.5 inch iMac with Retina 4K display, and of course we already have the 5K Retina iMac. In fact, most modern Macs with Retina displays have the horsepower to play 4K video without dropping frames, even if not at the full 4K resolution. The only fly in the ointment at the moment is the lack of support for 4K video in the soon to be released Apple TV. Now there are many pros and cons in shooting and editing in 4K, so I thought I'd cover the current state of 4K video and Apple software based on my experiences. And of course if you're not yet invested in 4K, I'll also demonstrate some of the other features in the new version of iMovie. Now I have covered iMovie in the past, uh, episodes 432, 433 and 434, and basically the way of editing movies is the same. So in this show I'm not going to start from scratch, and I would recommend that you check out those original shows for the basics of iMovie. But before we have a look at the new version of the application, I suppose we best really just have a chat about what is 4K. And 4K is the resolution of the video frame. Now there is some jargon around uh, resolution of video frames, but basically we have uh, three main ones at the moment, if you sort of forget standard definition for now. There's 720p, which is a resolution of 1280 by 720, and that's normally termed HD. Uh, we also have 1080p, which is a frame of 1920 by 1080, and that's normally regarded as full HD. Now 4K can be called several things. Uh, it's 2160p because the frame size is 3840 by 2160. And that's sometimes called UHD or Ultra HD. Uh, but there are some other variations of uh, 4K, but we'll stick with the uh, 3840 by 2160 because that's the resolution supported by the iPhone 6S and 6 Plus. Now, what pros are there of shooting in 4K? Well, you get a highly detailed image. It's four times the size of a standard full HD frame. It can be downsampled to 1080p and still look better than natively shot 1080p video. You can also use 4K footage for digital zooms and pans in 1080p movies without any loss of detail. And also with the bigger frame size, there's more scope for image stabilization. Now some of the cons of shooting in 4K, well the main one I suppose is the size of the media, um, especially if you take it on your iPhone and using the iCloud photo library, you can very quickly eat up lots of storage. For instance, just 15 seconds of 4K video on an iPhone 6S Plus comes in at just under 100 megabytes. Now if you do create 4K videos, you don't have to display them in 4K, you can quite easily downsize them. But the lack of playback devices, the lack of 4K TVs, although that's starting to become more prevalent, uh, might be an issue for you. And of course, as I mentioned earlier on, the next version of the Apple TV, the one that's due out next month, won't support 4K. But despite all the cons, I still think there's a lot of advantages to shooting in 4K. So let's start by having a look at how you would set up your iPhone to shoot in 4K, and then we'll take a look at iMovie. So this is the iPhone 6S Plus, and to get to your video setup, if you go into Settings, and then under Settings you have at the bottom here an option for Photos and Camera, and then down at the bottom here we go, we've got record video. Now by default, uh, record video is set to 1080p at 30 frames per second. But if you go in, you can knock it down to 720p at 30 frames per second uh, for a space saver. You'll see at the bottom how much a minute of video will be approximately for each particular format. So 60 megabytes for 720p, 130 meg for 1080p at 30 frames per second, 200 megabytes 1080p at 60 frames per second, and then 375 megabytes with 4K, which is the highest resolution. So to change to 4K, basically you just tap on 4K, and now we're ready to go. Uh, any video I take with this phone now will be recorded in 4K. Now I'll show you a little bit later on, there are certain things you can do to 
uh, free up space on your iPhone. Obviously, if you're going to switch to 4K and perhaps uh, take 4K permanently, you're very quickly going to eat into your iCloud photo library allowance. So I'll show you a few little tips uh, later on in the show how you can actually uh, sort of remove the videos from iCloud photo library and yet still use them in iMovie. As well as iMovie for Mac being optimized for editing 4K video, there is a brand new version of iMovie for iOS, which is also optimized for editing 4K video, and that's on the device itself, but it is limited to the iPhone 6S, the 6S Plus, and the iPad Pro. Now, if you do actually take 4K video, it will be propagated uh, in the iCloud photo library, and it will appear on all your devices. So if you have uh, a device that won't take 4K video, you can still review those clips on your device, so the 5S and the iPad Air and the iPad Air 2, etc. Uh, the only thing is those clips, although they do appear in the iCloud photo library, they won't appear as a selectable clip in iMovie on iOS in those devices, only on the 6S and the 6S Plus and the iPad Pro. But perhaps I'll check out iMovie for iOS in next week's iOS show. So let's take a look at iMovie for Mac. As I mentioned in the introduction, I'm not going to start from scratch, so I'll assume you have some basic knowledge of iMovie for Mac. Uh, check out episodes 432, 433, and 434. The, the basic way of editing is, is pretty much the same, but we have had some uh, interface changes in the application itself. So if I actually kick off iMovie, right, so I'll just quickly go through the UI, then we'll get some footage in and have a look at uh, how we use the 4K footage. So some buttons across the top, we can create either a new film or a new trailer, or as I say, a new movie or trailer. Again, both support 4K now, so you can create 4K movies and 4K trailers. Uh, we can actually import media uh, from a video camera or a folder on your computer. You have access to the photos library now, so you don't necessarily have to import things separately. You can pull videos directly in from the photos library. Now this first tab gives us a new look at our media, so that we can actually have a look at our media in the photos library, in our events or in our iMovie library or libraries, multiple libraries available to us now. Uh, we can also access our projects from here as well. I currently haven't set up any projects, but if I have movie projects or trailers, they would appear in here. And then the finished movies can be sent off to iCloud Theatre, which allows you to uh, replicate your finished movies across all your different devices. Uh, one nice new change in iMovie for Mac is that you can now import iMovie projects from iOS. Um, we'll perhaps take a look at that later or in next week's iOS show. But uh, let's go back to media. Now across on the left hand side we have this column that contains all the libraries. So these are all the sources for our video clips and our images that we might want to use when we're creating our movies or trailers. To get the full version of this tutorial completely for free, as well as immediate access to over 500 other Apple related tutorials, all you need to do is visit seofree.com to register for your 14 day no obligation free trial screencasts online membership. So that's seofree.com to register for your 14 day free trial membership.